In this episode, I wanted to show you the lsof command. We're going to review several issues and how the lsof command can be useful for troubleshooting what's going on. First off, what is this command? Well, the man page is packed with useful information and real-world examples, but briefly, the command allows you to display information about open files on your system. Since we're using a Unix-like operating system, just about everything is a file. Things like traditional config files, libraries, executables, pipes, and even sockets. I should mention that while doing research for this episode, I found many different pronunciations for the lsof command. Some people were saying ls of, some people were saying list of, and yet others were saying lsof. So I'm not exactly sure what the correct pronunciation is, but I'm just going to use the letters for now. I just thought it was kind of funny in that you could use a command for many years and have an idea of what it sounds like in your head, but then when you go to try to tell someone else about it, it sounds kind of funny. Anyways, let's run the lsof command without any options to see what the default output looks like. As you can see, there is plenty of output about what processes are running on your system. Information like what files, pipes, sockets those processes are using. Let's pipe this output to wc-l to get a line count. So on our test system, we have 1,022 lines of output. But if this were a busy machine, we could have tens of thousands of lines. Since this command has the ability to look at what regular files, pipes, and sockets a given process is using, it gives us a pretty good picture of what is happening behind the scenes. Let's run the ps command to list the active processes on our test system. Then we can pick something that looks interesting and use the lsof command to see what files are being used. Let's pick something at random here. Let's focus on the audit D process to figure out what files it has open. So let's type lsof-p. This tells lsof that we want to focus on a specific process. Then rather than typing out the process ID number, we're going to use the PID of command. This command finds the process ID for us. All we need to do is provide the process name. Then finally, we have our list of open files for the audit D process. I just wanted to focus on the pid of command for a minute and then we could discuss the lsof output. So we typed our lsof command and then we use these special quotes which allow us to execute a command within the quotes and return that as input into our lsof command. So the equivalent command would look something like this. lsof-p and then up here we find the audit-d process line item and its id number, in this case 1831. PID of can come in handy if you have long process ID numbers or the process ID is constantly changing, say for example if it's executed via a script or you have multiple process numbers. Okay, let's review the lsof output. So as you expect, we have the process binary file open, a bunch of library files, and then down here a log file. If this were a network enabled process, you would also see the socket info. I suggest you try this out on your own to see what it looks like. So why is this useful? Well, say for example that we found some interesting process that was taking lots of CPU or memory. This would help us see what files it's interacting with, which can be extremely useful for seeing how a process functions. Now that we know in general how the lsof command works, let's move on to a couple real-world examples where I've used the lsof command to solve problems. In the first example, let's say you have a file system which you would like to unmount. Let's just review the mounts for a second by running the df command. Since this is a virtual machine configured by Vagrant, see episode number 4 for details, we have the slash Vagrant mount. Say for example that you wanted to do some maintenance and you needed to unmount the slash Vagrant mount. We would run umount slash Vagrant. In this example we receive an error message saying that the device is busy. How would you go about troubleshooting this? Well in this case the error message is actually really useful in that it tells us to use the lsof command to find which files are open on the slash vagrant mount. So let's go ahead and run lsof slash vagrant. I already know what's going on since behind the scenes I opened a second terminal window and I'm using the less command to view a file on the slash vagrant mount. But if this were a real system you would likely see user processes. Let's just review what the output is telling us here. The vagrant user is running the less command and it's looking at the slash vagrant slash vagrant file. Since I know what's happening, and this is just an example, I'm going to kill this process. But if this were the real world, you'd likely need to work with the users to have them stop their jobs. Finally, let's verify that the file has been closed using lsof. 
Let's rerun the umount command and verify that it's actually unmounted. This technique can also be really useful for figuring out what's going on on an NFS mounted file system. In this final example, I wanted to talk about a weird issue that happened to me. I started receiving alerts for one of our systems saying the file system for a particular mount was full. So I logged in and started to troubleshoot the issue. One of the first things I did was issue the df command, just to verify that the alert that was firing was actually real. As you can see in this recreated example, the slash mount vfs mount is 100% full. Let's head into that directory and have a look to see if we can spot where the space is being used up. I will typically run a du-hs star and it'll give me a summary of where each folder sits in terms of size. This really helps narrow down where to look for large files by directory. What is interesting here is that we only have one directory called lost and found and that it's only 12k in size. So where is the file that's filling up the mount? Well, you can probably guess where this is going, but let's jump back for a second. The df command is telling us that our 30 megabyte device mounted as slash mount vfs is 100% full. But then down here, the du command is telling us that there's only 12k used. Something weird is happening. Let's use the lsof command to look for open files on the slash mount vfs directory. So we have some output here, but this particular line is interesting. It says that our example log data file is opened by the vagrant user, but it's deleted. So what's happening here? Well, in the real world example, someone was logged into the system and reviewing a log file that was pumping out tons of data, then forgot about their session. A background process came along and deleted the log file. However, the log was still active because someone still had it open, so the space was never freed. My suggestion would be that if you ever see an inconsistency between df and du, make sure you check this out. Let's fix the issue by killing the process and then verifying that df looks happy. All right, that concludes this episode. Thanks for watching. If you would like to get notified about future episodes, please subscribe to my mailing list. You can do this by going to the get notified link in the header and entering your email address. Have questions, comments, or concerns about this episode? What about episode ideas? I'd love to hear your feedback, either good or bad. Shoot me an email, justin at sysadmincasts.com.